Hey, it's Hannah here and today I'm talking about why some geldings drop their penis or even get erections during, well, predominantly clicker training. So why do they do it? Is it, uh, is it a problem? And what can we do about it? Because there are definitely things that you can do that can help and I've been looking at this for a lot of years so I have some tips for you at the end of the video. So first of all, what we need to look at is, you know, why some horses do this. This is a problem that people come to me with from time to time um, that their geldings or stallions are dropping through training and it is you know predominantly through clicker training but it's not just clicker training it, I've seen it quite a lot in lots of other types of training even training without food without treats some horses do it when they're ridden some horses only do it when they're doing lateral work or collected work and um, other horses do it when they're in what being worked in hand especially with that proximity again with or without treats and I've worked with some horses who have done it a lot in um, their training before I start working with them and then we work the with the, the clicker and the treats and they stop and we, we don't see it again. So there is a range um, and this is because it's not really about the training that's causing it, it's about the emotions. So this is what we're really going to look at today. Now if you know our work, um, mine and Rachel's at Connection Training, then you'll know that we use Pankcep's work as a framework to really understand how our horses are feeling and what's the best way to work with them and, and help them feel as good as possible. So Pankcep was a um, pioneering neuroscientist who identified seven core emotional structures in the brains of all mammals, um, horses and humans included of course. So if you haven't seen Rachel's introduction to those seven core emotions, stop this video, head over there now. The first one is the seeking system and she takes you through each of them and they really help you, will help you understand your horse's behaviour um, and it's the framework that we're looking at. Once you watch those, or if you if you know about his work already, then uh, come back here and stick with this video because we're going to turn to his work again um, for some really interesting insights on what might be causing dropping during training. So the first thing to look at is um, the whole horse. So very rarely, well, behaviour doesn't. It's not just one piece of behaviour. You've got to look at what the whole horse is showing you, and there are usually. There are two kind of emotional states where horses will be more likely to drop. So again, specifically in training, but we'll look at all um, situations as well. The first is when they're really excited, and that's usually accompanied by horses who just go, want to go, 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 and do more, 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 um, and they speed up and they're kind of almost frantic and manic, and you often get this like throaty wickers and arched necks and this kind of high level of energy and excitement. The other time that you often see um, dropping in training is when there's a certain level of frustration and this one is more often associated with things like ears pinning and um, kind of nipping, barging, grabbing the treats, often that feeling that they're just doing it for the food and that they'd kind of rather be elsewhere but they're kind of just, just going there anyway, there's kind of certain level of conflict. Now both of these situations describe over aroused horses. This means that the emotional states are over aroused, the horse is beyond the point of being relaxed enough to be able to think and learn. So looking back at then um, Panksepp's work, in the first case, when the horse is overexcited, this is an overexcited seeking system. Now the seeking system is the emotional system that is the get up and go, it drives the problem solving, and this feels innately good. In his book, Effective Neuroscience, Panksepp discusses an experiment that he did where rats had the ability to self-stimulate their seeking system. They could um, have the option to administer electricity to that area of the brain. And when they had the choice to do so, they did it incessantly. And what was interesting was that Panksepp noted that they didn't look like to be in their natural problem solving where they would problem solve, then they would get their food or their shelter or whatever it is, they would consume it, they'd calm down, they'd problem solve again. Instead, these rats were just on, 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 faster, faster, being frantic, manic, uh, really overexcited. And interestingly, many of them got erections and even spontaneously ejaculated. And this is what I think we see with um, certain types of clicker training that are kind of high speed, lots of high value rewards really quickly, lots of repetition, so it's this like behaviour click treat, behaviour click treat, behaviour click treat, behaviour click treat, and we're stimulating the seeking system to this kind of like high pitch <laughs> um, place. So um, that's one place where, you know, the what he was describing really correlated with some of the horses that I was seeing. Looking at the um, 
second bit where it seems to be much more tension and frustration, um, again Pengsep talks about the proximity and correlation between the rage system and the lust system in the male brain um, and how any kind of like anger, frustration, conflict, um, confusion in that triggers the rage system can also trigger the lust system. Now when you get this kind of like tension along with the uh, dropping in erections, I have also seen it be linked to physical issues. So um, again, if there's any kind of pain, and this seems to be predominantly in the hindgut, um, in the genital area itself, so through urinary beans or other issues in there, um, and also in hind end issues in through um, you know the the pelvis or the the hips, that kind of area. That if there is pain and tension in there, that horses are more likely to drop. Um, and I think that that is probably partly uh, a physical link um, and they'll do it. Again this links back to some of the horses that do it when they're kind of collected or doing lateral movements and things. But I've also seen it regularly where it happens and, and I think it the pain causes some level of conflict when the, 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 they want to do it for the treats but there's also this pain in there as well and being able to uh, take the pain away and help the horse relax, the dropping goes away as well. So that's really something to be aware of. So there are some crossovers here that you often have a horse who can be overexcited and then it tips very easily into frustration. So especially if you have a horse who can't relax, can't stop, can't just stand with you with the food that, and be, be chilled. If they're grabby about the treats, um, can't stand still, all of those things, there's obviously going to be some kind of crossover with this highly aroused seeking system and the frustration. But there's also a third scenario where they drop frequently and this is when they're relaxed. So if your horse drops when they're grooming, when they're snoozing, when you're giving them a scratch, when you're on a break, again that's a different type of um, emotional picture and um, a different kind of scenario that you see it. So in order to really understand what's going on you need to look at your whole horse. How are they feeling? What other signs are you seeing? Do you have um, the ears pinning? Do you have, are they relaxed or are they calm? Are they frantic or are they soft? Are they chilled out or are they conflicted? Like what else is going on in the picture to really look at the, the whole thing? And when you're assessing it as to whether it's a problem or not, for me the important thing is first of all this whole emotional picture because of course if your horse is feeling frustrated or conflicted or tense or overexcited and can't calm down then it's not a very nice place for your horse to be in and it's not very helpful for, for learning. I think it's also a problem when it happens in really unnatural situations so for example if they sustain an erection when they're in movement looks so uncomfortable, many horses hate it um, and it's not a natural thing for them to be doing so I think that's something to be aware of. Um, of course if it's a sign of any pain it's really important to be aware of um, but on the other hand if your horse drops and it's not an issue if they're relaxed, if they're you know calm, chilled, it only happens now and again just for short periods of time then maybe you don't have to be so concerned about it but the key is to really observe the whole horse, not get too obsessed <laughs> with willy watching, that it is just one behavioural sign um, and really Really pay attention to what are the triggers, when does it happen, well, how else does your horse look, what, um, how are they feeling and that will help you to get more of a, an idea and an understanding of what's causing it and how you can help your horse to feel uh, relaxed and calm. So most of these, well especially the kind of over arouse seeking system and the high levels of frustration is a lack of relaxation and at Connection Training we talk about relaxation all the time <laughs> but there are some things that you can do that can really help to bring relaxation in straight away. So the first one would be, um, like I said, those high value, high reward, uh, fast treats, the behaviour click treat, behaviour click treat type of training is very much arousing the seeking system and what you want to do is have the seeking system aroused, get the reward, calm down and um, that's a more natural state and it um, actually facilitates learning much better as well. So one thing you can do is feed your horse less frequently but high amount, large amounts of low value reward, nothing exciting when you do. Take some of that excitement out, get rid of the carrots, give them hay <laughs> or chaff, something really plain. Also make sure that you're not getting built up into this frantic place, so just breathe, slow down, keep your movements really calm, allow your horse to 
um, soften with you rather than you speeding up to match them. Including movement can really help horses to relax. They're physical creatures and that's a really great way to bring in some more uh, relaxation. And really pay attention to the triggers so that you can start to notice other signs of when your horse's tension is, arise, is rising and be able to, to keep them below threshold and help them to deal with those challenging situations without going over threshold. One thing I would like to add is that if um, your if well, first of all, not all horses do this by any means. Some horses can be highly over aroused um, and very, very tense, very conflicted, very excited and not drop at all. Um, and that, in that case, it's the same thing, just looking at the whole emotional state. Secondly, um, some horses drop all the time. So really notice your horse in their natural environment, when they do it, how often they do it. And you'll notice there'll be probably some crossover and links into the training. So again, there's a bit of a a personal um, difference in there um, and the other thing is that if it's been a long-term habit I suspect this is my theory that <laughs> I suspect that it feels inherently good to the horse so it's going to be harder to get rid of it's also been kind of classically conditioned to the whole situation um, and it will take longer to, to get rid of it, but you certainly can. So I started all of this, got really interested in horses dropping back in 2011, when one of my horses, Freckles, started to show it, and he was the first of my horses to do this, and there were some interesting uh, uh, things that led to it that I started to, to explore. So um, I spent a long time asking everybody, experimenting, finding out as much as I could about it, and um, really helping Freckles to become much more relaxed. And in uh, after a couple of years of when I'd really done all my research he was a much calmer happier more relaxed horse and these days he very rarely drops and if he does I know what's caused it how to help it and whether or not it's going to be a problem but generally I'm glad to say we don't see his willy very often in training at all um, and since then, so I presented actually on that in, in on Freckles' journey in the, the Equine Clicker Conference in 2013 and since then I've spent the past six years really refining my training techniques on how to help horses stay calmer, stay more relaxed um, in the training and this is something that I feel really passionate about now that it's about this communication in our relationship and the rewards are kind of come on top and are an extra but we, it's all about the emotional place for the horse. Um, so um, what else? Oh, one more thing. <laughs> um, that uh, my theory as to why it happens in horses more often than maybe in some other animals, and this is just a theory, but my theory is because they are grazers. So they are not designed to problem solve high energy, high arousal states like other animals who hunt and scavenge are. So again, the work comes back to looking at the ethology of the horse, the species that we're working with, and how we can adapt our training to really suit them. So if you're interested in more, then there is, I've done a long version of this video, um, including this, the extracts, specific extracts from Panksepp's book um, in the CT Club for members. And um, there's also my Overcoming Over Arousal presentation with Freckles from the Equine Clicker Conference in 2013. That's up in the CT Club as well. And our entire foundation course is really focused on how to find this emotional balance and connection with your horse through reward-based training. Um, there's, there are even three case studies in there. One of them was with a two-year-old colt, and in his second session with me, he started to get overexcited. He started to drop in the training, and you can see exactly how I kind of dipped it in the bud, so to speak, but helped him come back to that place of relaxation. And so it prevented it, and we didn't see it again. And there's also one of the other case studies is a donkey named Ned, who, again, um, got kind of over aroused in a different way, he wasn't dropping but that tense ears pinning and things um, later on in the training and that was a huge amount of conflict for him. So it's another really interesting case study how I dealt with that so that all of them were able to be calm, relaxed and soft with me through the training and of course there was no dropping. So if you're interested in learning more do head over to connectiontraining.com, check out the CT Club, we'd love to have you there. It's a wonderful supportive community, we have a forum, live Q&As and of course hundreds of step-by-step -step videos as well.